Hi everyone. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about rainwater catchment. Most of, mostly when we think of rainwater catchment, you might just think of a rain barrel or cistern, but there's actually a lot easier and more small scale ways to do it, even if you don't have gutters and a rain barrel all set up. We're actually about to start getting some rain right now. It's been pretty rainy here the past few days. Now when I first moved into this house, this piece of the of the yard was almost bare soil and it's hard to see on camera but you might be able to see how there's a groove in the soil it goes all the way up to the top this this is ele it goes up this is the highest elevation of my property right there the property next door water that's even a higher spot and water flows off of it and down this little trench it has formed this trench and then it flows right down the property right down the driveway out to the street. Now, that's something you don't want. You want to keep water on your property. It can reduce your irrigation requirements. So, things you can do. You can actually block the flow of water, kind of trap it. You want to trap it as high up the slope. Start trapping it as high up the slope as you can. So, start up here. I've just dug a little mini ditch. Just a little mini ditch with a shovel. And I can see, like during a rainstorm, I can actually see these little mini trenches fill. And there's trenches all down here, all down here. They're more effective than you can imagine, these tiny little trenches. It's really quite phenomenal. Now I'm going to show you another, it started to rain even harder. I'm going to start show you another little rainwater catchment here. When it starts raining, water flows down this sloping concrete and flows out and right down the driveway again down the storm drain but I recently started trapping this water now this isn't obviously it's not fancy it's just a bunch of bricks a bunch of pavers some pavers that I dug up from there so the water just flows down and after a little while of hard rain you'll actually see several inches of water sitting here and then it has a chance to percolate into the soil instead of running off down the driveway. Surprisingly effective. And I'll show you one last thing. I have, I've started some little, uh, little clumps of a coastal, a tall coastal grass. The sand here is sort of, well, the soil here is very sandy, like desert-like. So dug these little holes, just these little holes by each one of the grass plants. And see, they actually catch, when it rains, they actually catch silt. So after each, after each rain, I actually kind of dig them out again and they'll silt up, they'll fill up with water and, and nutrients that from up the hill a little. They seem like really small things, but they add up. In permaculture, we emphasize small, slow solutions, human scale, things you can do with hand tools, things that are incidentally good exercise. If you have a little extra weight on your body like I do, you don't have to, uh, you know, rebuke yourself, tell yourself to lay off the cookies and not eat that extra burrito. You could just think of it as fuel for yard work. That's my solar oven out there. By the way, these concepts I'm talking about, water collection, I, I got them from permaculture design class and from Brad Lancaster's book, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands. Brad tells us that most deserts are man-made. I live in a coastal town, Daytona Beach, that gets 49 inches of rain a year, and we can very easily be a desert. There are actually several lots right near where I live where there, it's actually a desert because the grass has been cut so short and the ground hasn't been contoured to catch water. So it's great to have a rain barrel, and I have one, but also these little small slow solutions catch rainwater. This is Jenny Nazak. This has been another Deep Green Minute. Have a great day.